All right, here we go. Phase on love. Welcome back. What? I try to get out. He pulls me back. <laughs> Every time I try to get out, they pull me <laughs> back in. Back in. <laughs> 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 it's been about six months since our last interview, man. Glad you're still doing months? well. Yeah, it's been about that. I think last November, I think, is when we last did it. Wow, yeah, okay. Yeah. It seems so long, yeah. like, so many cities and all this stuff going on, you know, because it was, it was in the middle of the um, pandemic thing, right? Right. Are we still in the pandemic? Uh, I think we're coming out of it. Oh, yeah. Slowly, slowly. You know, I got vaccinated. I don't know about you, but I got vaccinated. Yeah, I already know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. YouTube is very touchy when it comes to these type of subjects, so I'm just going to leave it alone altogether. Uh, YouTube, they don't want to have it? No, like... <laughs> no, nah, nah, they don't want to have these conversations. <laughs> okay. Well, by the time this comes out, we're almost ready to have the Mayweather-Logan Paul fight. Number one, were you surprised this is even happening? I I am because the whole shit is bullshit. I mean, I saw the last they were fighting gardeners and shit. Um, <laughs> or Dennis was next. I was like, what the fuck is this bull? But I was all geared up. I get the concept. I, Snoop was hosting and Ice Cube it. I was loving that. And then um, the fight was just so bullshit. He knocks the guy out. I was like, the guy the guy probably took a some money to you know to fall out. He's like, what is? What does he give a fuck? He's like, but this here, because Floyd has to win, right? Okay, there is no, <laughs> uh, but it, it's great entertainment. But Floyd has to win, because mm-hmm. I was saying the whole the the boy the the boy's a chump. I'm like. Well, this guy's not a real fucking boxer. And Floyd has to like, let me explain something. You're not a real boxer. This is what I do. I am the best, greatest. This is what I fucking do, boy. If Floyd gets knocked out, I'm going to stop watching this shit. If Floyd <laughs> slips on a banana on the way to the fucking thing and like, oh, we can't do the fight. I'm like, okay, the fuck out of here. But I don't know how they're gonna get there. I don't know how they're gonna get out of this. But the boy has to get knocked out. Uh, yeah. I mean, Floyd is fifteen zero plus. You know, whatever exhibition matches he had. You know, like the Conor McGregor thing. I don't know if that counts as in, in his fifteen zero or not because it wasn't like a real boxing match. Uh, but if he loses to anyone for any reason, there will always be a little asterisk by his name. Right, but Floyd Floyd's smarter than that. So, and then the, when the boy took his hat, I'm like, ah. <laughs> well, his brother took his hat. See, I don't know Jake which Paul. one of these motherfuckers is which. Yeah, it, he, it, he's fighting Logan, but Jake is the one that took Floyd's hat. Well, still, that's still an ass whooping. For, like, for, I, I Floyd said, I'll fight both of you motherfuckers. Now that's just, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I will both your ass. Like a wrestling match, like both of them in there, ah, ah, hey, ah, knocking their heads together. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I think Floyd can whoop. I know he can whoop. That. I mean, he is. It's, it's like I don't. I don't get where they're going with it. Other than everybody's gonna watch it. Yeah, it's a big payday for everybody. Right, which is cool. Like I said, even with Mike Tyson, I knew where that was going. I'm like, I actually told you, like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this one I don't know I have no I don't know I don't see the angle but money unless they um, just say fuck it we gonna call it a draw anyway cause he maybe Floyd doesn't knock him out he just boxes him but yeah he has to, I, don't know, I think man. he has to knock him out yeah I, I... I mean, I think so too, but he's also a lot smaller and lighter than that, Logan. That you that is that bull listen to me. That bullshit listen, somebody with the right <laughs> that bigger shit 
In theory, that means I can beat Michael J. Jai White. I'm bigger than him. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> talked about this last time. So in, th in that theory, because I'm bigger than Michael Jai White, I can whoop his ass. No. He has skills. Floyd has skills. No matter how big he is, that right combination is is it's a wrap. And that other guy don't have no skills like that. I mean, you that you know what I'm saying? Well, I remember talking to Zab Judah about this. Right. Uh, off camera, we were just hanging out after the Mike Tyson interview. And he was actually in Logan Paul's training camp. And he, huh. he trained with him somewhat. And he said Logan Paul is actually training hard. And he's like at the level of like maybe a Golden Gloves boxer. He's right. not at the level of a professional boxer, exactly. but it's not like he's going to get in there and just flail around <laughs> like, you know, no. like, like Nate like Nate Robinson. Yeah. Like, you know, that's not going to happen. Right. Uh, but, you know, I mean, listen, someone who's big and muscular like a Logan, if he somehow manages to get one clean punch on Floyd's jaw, you don't know what's going to happen. Listen. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, but you never know in, in a fight. In, you got to be able to connect that you have to connect it the right way. It's the right way to connect that punch. You can't just uh, get lucky. You got to connect that punch because boxers get hit all the time in the mouth. Yeah. It's like eating soup. <laughs> they always get hit in the mouth. So a regular person get hit in the mouth, they probably, they're going to go down. But Floyd, Floyd's been hit, but you remember when he hit by, got hit by um, uh, Sean? I mean, um, what's homie from Pasadena? I mean, from uh, um, um, Upland. Um, I mean, from Pomona. Um, uh, ah, come on, man. I mean, Tell about the the Spanish kid? No, 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 no. Um, pretty boy uh, from Pomona. Um, There's two people from Pomona. Sugar Free. <laughs> Sugar Shay. Sugar Shay. Okay. Sugar you Shea don't remember when Sugar Shay hit Floyd? I remember that. Yeah. And Floyd got right back up and got to it. Well, he didn't get back up. I mean, he never got knocked down. I mean, No, he, he got but right that was a hell of a punch. Yeah. He even dropped his glove like, whoa. That's from somebody who delivered him. I mean, I people say what they want about Floyd, but it's that 50... Is is behind there, but and this guy is a chump. He's like a straight chump. Like uh, um, Zab told you, all right. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens. Personally, I think that that Mayweather is going to destroy him. He's just going to tap him up for that's, however many that's rounds. What I, that's, yeah. that's that's what I that's what I think. That's he has what I to. Think. You know, I I, um, I will stop watching boxing. If anything, if, if Mayweather loses, I will stop watching boxing and everything about uh, – he has to. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I will get in the ring now. It's like, fuck it. Okay. Is this what's cracking? Well, on that same fight on the undercard, Chad Ochocinco is fighting MMA fighter Brian Maxwell. That's not going to work out right. You don't think so? Chad is muscular, but yes. I don't know about that heart. I don't know about if he when he gets hit in the mouth, how that's gonna work. The guy's okay. an MMA fighter. Yeah, he can do a roundhouse and slap the shit out of your ear. Well, you can't kick anyone in the ring. Okay, it's a boxing match. Okay, it's a boxing match. It's straight boxing. Yeah, straight boxing. Yeah, Listen. it's not an MMA fight. <laughs> Have you seen every MMA fighter's ear? <laughs> Are you talking about what's his name? Khabib. Khabib with the giant. They all got ear. that ear. <laughs> you too near me not to hear me. They all have that ear. Right? The ear. The MMA ear. Chad ain't got that ear. He ain't got that ear. Well, I mean, to be fair, the guy that Jake Paul fought was an MMA fighter and he got knocked out. No, he took a dive. Yeah, I could see that as well. He came in there with a stomach. I'm gonna make yeah, he had a, he, five. What do you mean five? Man, he made way more than he did as an MMA fighter to take a dive. Yeah, he 
Yeah, he looked happy as hell leaving that ring. Yeah, he was, that, was, that was the happiest loser I've ever seen. Check, like. please. <laughs> <laughs> he made five million dollars just to go just to, what for two minutes of work. <laughs> right. I don't know how many, but it was. It's got to be something like that. So yeah, I'll be. I, yeah, okay. I lost. So, oh yeah, whatever. Nobody's gonna <laughs> remember him. It's not going out in history. <laughs> the great. <Right. laughs> it's not the thriller right. Manila. <laughs> Right. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Chad. Like I said, we saw what happened with a Chad's professional gonna be, sports player. Chad's going to go home hurting. Mm, right. I mean, we saw what happened with Nate Robinson, who was a similar type of athlete. Right. Accomplished athlete in a different sport that got in the ring, that didn't train properly, and got mutilated. At, Chad is a, a great athlete, but at this right, at that fighting is not to be fucked. You can't just. Get in there and do it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you can't. I agree. You, you know, it was street fight. Yeah. Well, uh, during the the Jake Paul fight, the undercard to that was Bosco versus Gonzo. <laughs> Did you watch that? I didn't see it because you know, uh, Gonzo is like my little son, and <laughs> Bosco. I know Bosco. And I didn't want to see. I want to. I didn't want to see. I mean, I've been knowing Gonzo since he was a kid. Before he uh, joined, you know, and he's a good kid. And um, you know, I, I'd rather end up like that than the other shit that it could have got to. So I respect right. him for that, definitely. Yeah, I've actually interviewed both of them. Gonzo was actually on my show recently. We haven't put it out yet. But, you know, we talked about the whole thing. I mean, they were gearing up to literally have just a, a street fight in a park somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That could have went bad because somebody, you know, so I, I, I like it. Yeah, so I, I dig I, it. I, wanna, I dig it. Know, there's, I a big, there's a big weight and, and height difference between the two of them, which is why they wore headgear. And, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, they said it was a draw. Um, I mean, both of them were not in the best of shape. No, you know, it's, it's hard to get in that no, way and really because they're not boxers. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, uh, and coming up as well, and these are two people I've interviewed: is Lamar Odom and Aaron Carter, which is the most mixed matched, mismatched Aaron fight. Carter? Aaron Carter was the he's a uh, he's that little pop singer guy. You know, remember he was a little kid, and now he's older. Why is Lamar fighting him? I have no idea. There's like a foot. That's over some women. Foot shit. difference. <laughs> what? That's over, that's over some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> They're messing with the same girl. And... <laughs> I don't even know each other. <laughs> I see you talking to Leeds. <laughs> yeah. Why would the, they be the difference, Yeah. The difference between these two, size wise, just doesn't make any damn sense. That doesn't it, it, really matter, though. Okay, if Aaron Carter knocks out Lamar Odom, I will donate ten thousand dollars to the the charity of your choice. I, don't, I, I mean, I don't know who he is. I don't know. You know, he might be he might be a secret. Like, oh, you don't know me. He might be some Tai Chi Karate King, or or, or who knows? Um, he might be a boxing. Who knows? I don't know who that guy is. But but other than he's a pop star and. He probably right. lives in Tarzana or something. Who knows? I, I mean, uh, Lamar Odom is 6'10". Aaron it Carter is 6'1". Most boxers, most basketball players can't fight. Okay. Uh, Have you ever seen that? Okay, Aaron Carter at one point. Okay, Aaron Carter, I think, weighs 160 pounds right now. At right. one point, he weighed 115 pounds when he was going to rehab. Uh, oh, and, Lamar and he, weighs like 250. Yeah, he was on drugs at one point. <laughs> So, so you're talking really about 250. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, both of them. Yeah, you're right. It's you know, the rehab I mean, match. Essentially, <laughs> the rehab match. Aaron Carter got, they got Lamar's room at Betty Ford. He's like, bitch. <laughs> See you in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> the rehab match. Oh, well, we go to hell for this. I mean, we're talking about roughly double the weight, though. If you want to, you, you know, you want to say the height don't matter, the weight, the, the the wingspan, the arm, Lamar's arms are twice as long as Aaron's. 
the great Bruce Lee was teaching you that when he fought Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, in a movie. It's not a, but oh. In a movie. Listen to me. Bruce Lee. Choreographed, scripted no, film. but it's, it's a real fact. Bruce Lee could not beat Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in an yes, actual street fight. Get the fuck out of here with why that. Why do you guys think, why do you think I, Iron Man exists, but Bruce Kareem Lee could is put a real his head on Bruce Lee's, could put his hand on Bruce Lee's face and, and, and Bruce Lee's swing. He got to get there first. There's, 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 there's always obstacles in it, but a fighter is going to find the, the, the close, they're going to close that gap. Okay. Kareem Abdul Jabbar okay, okay, can, grab, check this out. can grab Bruce Lee at his house while he's changing for the fight. <laughs> That's how long his arms are. While he's in the shower get, getting dressed, Kareem can fucking have his plastic man arm one, go and Kareem grab him. Kareem is slow. Okay. He's slow. It takes a long time. Okay. I'm telling you. Okay. Size has nothing to do with a fighter, a skilled fighter. Okay. Well, because I remember last time we talked about the whole Bruce Lee, Michael Jai White thing. And Michael Jai White responded and said that Faze on Love knows nothing about fighting. He's absolutely wrong. Because let okay. me pick Michael Jai White's guy, his opponent. Okay, who would it be? He wouldn't know him. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't know him. Okay. <laughs> it ain't somebody in front of the camera. Okay. It'll be somebody, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, let's hear it. Let's hear it. No. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen Michael beat up anybody in the streets. No, that is, this is correct. So, in the ring, where it's control, point karate and all that stuff, Charlie Murphy was a beast at that. Okay, but to be fair, I have a video of Michael Jai White sparring with John Bones Jones, who is considered the greatest MMA fighter of all time, and Michael was holding his own. What do you mean holding his own? He was holding his own. He was getting some kicks in. He was, he was, you know, I mean, he was like what? they were. Did he knock him out? He, was, he, he did not knock him out. Oh, okay. Did he, did, did Michael, <laughs> did Michael Bones Jones, whatever his name, say, God damn, Michael, God damn. You can beat Bruce Lee. God damn. <laughs> did, did Michael Bones Jones leave there like, whew, whew, this motherfucker can beat Bruce Lee. Fuck no. He walked out there like, oh, that's, that's cute. They do that in Hollywood, huh? <laughs> Is that what they do? This is what Bruce I, Lee did in Hollywood, right? No, no, no. Bruce Lee was seen. I'm, I'm talking about. I was so mad when I saw that movie, um, North Hollywood. Oh, I just watched it last night. Eh. And the eh. guy beats up. I wanted. I wanted to kick. The, I'm like, are you fucking crazy? No, not North Hollywood. The the one with um, Brad Pitt. When Brad, Brad Pitt beats up Bruce Lee. Oh, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That one. There you go. Kicked him into a car. Right. So that Brad, let's replace Brad Pitt, Pitt with Michael Jai White. Right. <laughs> I think it would actually be even worse than what Brad Pitt did. No, but I yeah. know, because you think size matters. If that, if that matters, then that means I can beat Michael Jai White. Well, you are not pure muscle. Oh, really? Yes, yes. <laughs> there's a little bit of padding around oh, the muscle. Really? I'm not saying oh, you don't have a lot of muscle. Oh, really? I'm there's a little bit. There's a little bit of padding. Oh, a little bit of really? padding. Oh, <laughs> really? A little bit. A little bit. I would okay? agree, and I would never yes. get in the ring with him. <laughs> no, I would never. <laughs> I would never. Uh, uh, Step into a ring with Michael J. White, but okay. Let me okay. Pick, let me pick his opponent. Okay. Well, here's another question: Would you do a celebrity boxing match? It depends on who I'm fighting. What about the guy from the airport? 
I already won that one. <laughs> <laughs> I already won that he one. Might, he might want a rematch. He might have been training every day. Yeah, he would have to sign a waiver saying he's going to sue me and all that other bullshit. But I'll, I'll definitely, I actually held back from him because I didn't want to hit him with my fist because I felt my fist break in his eyes. I actually okay. held back. I was like, I, I was like, while I was doing it, I was like, I will fucking stomp you. But in the police, if you look at the video, the police are right there watching me. <laughs> like, okay. we'll just wait till he comes down. He's had enough. <laughs> like, okay. But, uh, I mean, it depends on who it is. I mean, you know, if, if, if I, if I, if I don't like the person, which is, that's very hard, you know, like, you know, or so if the person, I, I'm, I'm at my best in a, fight because I think everybody can whoop me. So I have to prove it to myself. You know, like people say, I'm going to whoop your ass. I'm willing to find out. I have to be extremely upset. Extremely upset to even go there. Like, I have to I have to really be like, I, be, I have to really want to kill you. Okay, so if you were offered a, a million dollar Celebrity boxing match with Cat Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Fuck you, Wes. <laughs> oh. It's unfair because, you know why? Everybody going to say Faison. I know he can't fight. I know for... He got beat up by a four-year-old. <laughs> and all I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be me. It's going to be comedy, me chasing him around the ring. <sighs> and he, 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 he's on the, it's gonna be like Bugs Bunny in, in the trans. Uh, it's going to look like a cartoon. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's going to look like a cartoon. I mean, it, yeah. I know I for a fact that I would smash him. Like, smash him. He can't beat up a four-year-old. <laughs> right, four-year-old like whooped his ass. Got him like in a headlock or something, right? Like a choke he, hold or he, something? He got a fair hit on the four-year-old, slapped the shit out of the four-year-old. The four-year-old said, lean back. He was saying, nigga. Wah, 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 wah. Got him in the four-year-old. He had to call help. <laughs> From an adult, <laughs> come get this kid off me. No, no. <laughs> okay. He was. He... Well. Okay. Well, speaking of fights, me and you had a conversation uh, recently, where you said that you and Puffy almost got into a fight on the set of Made. <laughs> we did, but Puff, that's my man. Me, it was real. It was Puffy's crew against my crew. But, uh, okay. Paul, Big Paul, yeah, but no, we, yeah, we was, yeah, we, yeah, it, it got, it got, it got a little hairy, but then it was. A, <laughs> what was shit. it? What was it over? It was during the middle of all that shit, that East Coast West Coast shit. We were doing, um, um, and I. I, I <laughs> Well, hold on, hold on. The, the the film the film came out in two thousand one. The East Coast West Coast West Coast shit was happening around ninety six. First of all, we filmed that <laughs> in um, two thousand. Okay. And um, yeah, you you think the East Coast shit was just one month? <laughs> 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 they didn't know my lineage in um, New York. They didn't know, you know, they thought I was just some California gig guy, blah, 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 blah. So it's funny now. We, you know, I mean, every time I see Puff, he, he don't show me nothing but love. Puff and Pauly. So, but we straightened it that night, that day. Uh, at the spa downtown, it was like, it, it got hairy, but then it was like, oh, he is not alone. He knows. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this might get ugly. That was, yeah. And he actually, we, 
it was actually back then testosterone. It was the testosterone uh, was so high of uh, cruise and who this nigga what with all that shit and um so at one time me and Paulie had some words and then um we squashed that he shook my hand I was like man it was just whoopty whoop and after that I gotta say it's been you know uh just really all love every time I see it no matter where I'm I was in Dayton, I was in Columbus, Ohio. I just landed. And I heard that um, Bad Boys was doing a concert in Cincinnati. So my boy says, hey, man, you know Bad Boys in Cincinnati? It's like an hour drive, whatever. I'm like, fuck that. I want to go see this, you know? Because I'm actually a Puffy fan. I, I eat the band lead. I know. I'm like, let's go. Get in the car. I don't have no tickets, no nothing. I get to Cincinnati, I pull backstage, see Carl Thomas, hey, come on in. No tickets and everything. Second person I see, I'm the Puff. Puff's like, yo, what you doing? I'm like, I'm here to see you. He's like, come with me. I'm like, no, I want to sit in the audience like a fan. Bro. I'm about to party. I'm about to get drunk. I'm about to, and it was the best time I ever had. And that's been our really our relationship. Back then, <laughs> when we started was doing uh, made it was just some it was just some crazy misunderstanding shit that we uh we squashed right there because Big Polly was like hey he came to me I think Pump was like hey man you know y'all gotta squash that shit we working out here <laughs> but I was like that's not what I want I want to hear you slap up Puff, Puff no, no 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 <laughs> I I actually want to want the cool peaceful story at the end I don't want the we're still oh, no. No, twenty Puffy, years later story yeah, Puff no, has always been uh. A good guy, I man. That it was a, a real to me. You know what I'm saying? Like he's one of the guys I know. He has always been who he said he is. I don't write rhymes, nigga. I write checks. <laughs> 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 right, because because Puffy actually has this sort of history of altercations with various people. Like yeah, you know, there was the Drake altercation where Puffy allegedly smacked Drake, allegedly, uh -huh. uh, and then J Cole on his new album said that he almost got into a fight with Puffy. Over Kendrick. I mean, like I said, we had our little thing, and I'm I'm me. So, and I think that's what they respected, and they didn't really know. They thought, hey, we just. So it was like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's a different thing, you know. Every time I've, uh, you know, like I said, every every, I judge it from when we got into it. That day it was squash, and that day it was squash. It's been beautiful. Every time I see him, or hey, I'm at this, I'm going to this restaurant or whatever. It, it's all love. Like hey, uh, you know, uh, you know, you gotta say I don't walk around with bodyguards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So when you see me in the airport, that's just me and God. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see me in Harlem at Jacobs eating. With some homies or something, they're not bodyguards. They're people I know from Harlem. Mm -hmm. Will be Mel Maxi or Alpo or whoever. I know these people. Yeah, I met them there. Hey, meet me there. I'm going to Jacobs to eat. It's not like I need fifty motherfuckers to be. Uh, fuck they, You ever heard of um, JFK? John F. Kennedy. Yes. Yeah, I heard about him. Yeah. Yeah, something happened to him. Yeah. He mm -hmm. had a gang of motherfuckers with him. A gang? A gang. Professional. Right, with pistols, I heard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you see how that turned out. Yeah, not too well. Yeah, so that's that <laughs> that all that bullshit don't mean nothing having <laughs> yo man, what's up, nigga? You just touched on on Alpo, and you actually were the one that hooked me up with Alpo. I've been trying to get a hold of him <laughs> through various means for a while, but you actually know him. Yeah. You guys are supposed to be doing something together. You hooked us up. We talked on the phone because everyone was like, when's the Alpo interview going to happen? When's the Alpo interview going to happen? I'm like, I talked to the guy. He's interested, but then there was someone else in his ear claiming they got some big documentary deal or some big movie deal. And this is usually what happens with these types of guys. Like, 
you're talking to them about an interview, you work something out with them, but there's always someone around saying, don't do that. I got a hundred million dollars for you over here one day, you know, which 99% of the time never happens. So they're kind of sitting in limbo waiting for this giant check, you know, that someone is promising for them. Now, what's going on with Alpo? Are you guys still talking? I think he's enjoying his life. You know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? He's been, you know what I'm saying? On vacation. So he's enjoying his life just. And right now, it's like, you know, you know those things you guys want to, I don't want to put none of those. Uh, the, those things you guys talk about are hard. Oh, yeah. So. I would say right now, let him enjoy his life. Let him go get something to eat. Let him fall in love. Let him, uh, you know what I'm saying? Let him walk in the park. Let him, because you guys know said these things have been going through his head for years. Decades. Yes. Mm-hmm. So to be out and breathing and like, you know, uh, he's probably, he's just, and I'm not putting nothing words in his mouth, but it's like that, it's, he's enjoying his life. Like damn, I, you know, it's my se- it's my second chance. Like what the fuck, you know? Like you know, and everybody is tell me about the gangster shit because gangster shit is cool now to be a gang member. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? <laughs> where, 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 where was I at when this shit was? <laughs> what what were you and Apple working on, or were you working on anything? I'll tell you later. Okay. All right. Like, Off camera conversation. I got. It. I respect. <laughs> I, I respect that. I don't want to blow up any spots. Uh, I'm not going to blow up any spots. <laughs> well, uh, the person that's been in the news probably the most recently uh, is Qu- Kwame Brown. So you know what? I don't know what he's saying, but somebody sent me some several texts saying, "Go get your brother." I was like, "What?" I, I, I didn't get it. I was like, "What do you mean?" I thought I, he says he's talking that shit like you talking. I was like. What is he saying? <laughs> I was like, oh, he he cusses people out like I have never seen. Oh, so they he, were equating what I say to how he's doing it. I, I I don't know. Yeah, except I think he takes it a few levels past. I mean, he he just doesn't hold nothing back. He got into it with with Matt Barnes. Uh, you know, got into it with Charlemagne. Got into it with Stephen A. Smith. And yeah, he just he just what happened with him and Charlemagne? I'm not gonna get into it. That's between them. There's, oh, there's no, no, no. That's some touchy yeah, subjects between guys. them. I'm, I'm going I'm to leave it alone. I'm going I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that one alone. You don't want to talk about it? Me and Charlie made it cool these days. I'm trying but to keep it that happened, way. what happened, though? I have to Google it. Well, let, let's just say that Charlemagne kind of tried to jump into the, into the conversation that, you know, Kwame was sort of having with everyone else. And he, he brought up, I guess, some of his family members because I guess they come from the same place. And then Kwame just let him have it, <laughs> you know, to the point where ultimately Charlemagne apologized, uh, gave himself the donkey of the day to Kwame. So, so wait a minute. So it sounds like Kwame speaking facts. Kwame put out some stuff that Charlemagne doesn't want to address, and I'll, I'll just. Oh, so he's speaking facts. Okay, that's how. So that's how you tell me. Now I'm going to research all this shit. You can research it. You can research it to your own, to your heart's content. To your heart's content. And, and you're trying to, okay, I got you. Uh, uh, no, you, no. Uh, see, this was funny. I know you and Charlamagne are cool, but he keeps mm-hmm. it real. Mm-hmm. He goes at people and gives them donkeys the other day. I am probably gave him the donkey stuff the other day. He keeps it real mm-hmm. and tells people, oh, they should do this and they should do that. There's a, Biggest fucking hypocrites in the world on that fucking show. Talk shit, but so this Kwame guy must have pulled some some real shit and and to make him do all that. So that's deep. So yeah, because they, you know, hey, yeah, they they've been uh, yeah, they've been uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went on there one time and I said, Chappelle, um. I said Ch- black people wasn't fucking with Chappelle back in the day. Mm-hmm. And they went on there and re- flipped and said, Faison said Chappelle sucks. I'm like, to every comedian that came on there, I was like, that's not what I said, motherfucker. 
I didn't never said he sucks. I said he he was black people wasn't fucking with him back in the day. Chris Rock has been killing this shit for years. Mm-hmm. For years. Chappelle did got paid for doing Chris Rock's sh- show. You wait, you think Chappelle took Chris Rock's overall style? You think? No, 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 no. No. Chappelle took the guy named um uh, it's a guy from D.C. Uh, God damn it. Very funny. He took his style. Um, God damn it. Um, niggas don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Tony Tony Baker? No, Tony Baker. No, not Tony Baker. No. Um, Tony. Um, God damn it. What the fuck is his name? Very funny comedian. That's, that was his whole thing. I get it. And um, you know, and that's actually you know, pe- you know, yeah, rappers do. Everybody does it. It's, it's flattering, but that's not what uh, um, and Charlie Burnett. You know, uh, I don't know if you know Charlie Burnett. Wait, you talking about uh, Tony Woods? Tony Woods. There you go, Tony Woods. <laughs> Funny motherfucker. And um, that's he took that, and um. And a little bit of Charlie Burnett, which is, you know, everybody. And that wasn't even, I wasn't, you know, I've known Chappelle. He's he's one of the nicest guys ever. He's never. I agree. Never, ever, you know. And we were just having a conversation about comedy. And they, I, I can't believe you don't say, put him at your top five. I'm like, are you fucking retarded? No. You look at me like he said the word retarded. So I don't know if there's another word, but. I don't care. <laughs> Say what you want. I don't. I don't know. Of uh, yeah. I mean, there's so many other people that that contribute to comedy other than um, Chappelle. That's made it change. Because if you look I, at I his, agree. If if you look at his show, his show was basically um, Chris Rock's show that he had on HBO, mixed with a little bit of uh, Flip Wilson. It's not, it's not nothing new. I mean, look, I, I can see why people wouldn't put Chappelle in their top five. Would I put Chappelle in my top five? Yeah, I, I think I would. But I could, I could completely see an argument not to put him in there, especially if you're a comedian, which I am not. Right. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm taking my, my, a step back and saying, since I am not ingrained into the art form the way you are, then, then your opinion is going to be completely from a different angle than mine is in terms of comedy, stand up, however you want to do it. So yes. I can see why people wouldn't put him because because there's so many just absolute greats, especially if you go back to like the Red Foxes, the Priors, the you know I mean even the Bill Cosby's in his heyday, oh my God. you know Are when you he was doing stand up, yeah, it, you know that, that you could there. you could fill up yeah you could fill up that five very quickly without even getting into like today's era. Very, yes, if you're gonna start with and, today's era. You're gonna start with Chris Rock, because Eddie Murphy's already in that. He's already in that clique. He's already in yeah. that five. Yeah, undisputably, undisputable. But you're gonna start with Chris Rock. I, 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 Chris Rock. It's fucking amazing. Oh yeah, amazing. And yeah. there's no other Chris Rock. I can't say where did Chris sounds like uh, Chris. This, this, who the fuck Chris sounds like Chris? Agreed. So that's why I was like, what the fuck? Why are they jumping over Chris? Because Chappelle's in New York. Because, you know, New York is all, oh, if you're in New York, New York, New York, yo, 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 fuck that. Well, uh, Seth Rogen recently did an interview. And he was talking about how comedians complain about cancel culture. And he said, Seth Rogen's saying a bad ter- motherfucker. He is. He's a bad he motherfucker. Is. He said, saying terrible things is bad. So if you said something terrible, then that's you. Then that's something you should confront. I don't think that's cancel culture. What do, you, what do you mean? Like, Meaning, what I think he's saying, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but what I think he's saying is that if, let's just say, you look at Eddie Murphy's old stand-up, where there's a lot of homophobic stuff in there. That's right? what they call it now. Right, they call it that now. Now, back then, you could say it and no one even blinked an eye. It was street talk. 
It was street talk, right? But, you know, like faggot ass faggot and, you know, all this type of stuff that you really can't get away with these days. He was saying it back then. And what he's saying is like, look, okay, someone like Eddie Murphy, he says something like that. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's not a great thing to say about gay people. So at the end of the day, it's not, he's not being canceled. He just said something kind of messed up back then. And just because it doesn't translate these days doesn't mean he's getting canceled. He's just, it's just something that he probably should have said in the first place, period. That's how he looks at it. That's how I think he's looking at it. Now, you might have a different perspective. My perspective is the world is getting soft. <laughs> because you, can, you, you can't say the word, but you can say the word nigga. All day long. No one stops, has a parade. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really politics. The people that are in charge going, you can't say that word. Fuck you mean. This word's been out before I was born. And it doesn't mean the same thing as I, when I say it to a person. My brother... I remember finding out what it is the first time. It's a cigarette. Okay, I was, how you know you're talking about a cigarette? But it's like, hey, we want to cancel you. Well, Who's this kind of... Well, look, I mean, this actually kind of touches on someone that you just talked about, which is Chris Rock. And he was on The Breakfast Club. He said that cancel culture is making everything safe and boring. We don't give a fuck about cancel culture. I don't. Because what you don't want are these black men on the streets in your fucking house with a shotgun going, now what? You forced me to go here. So all this cancel culture shit can end up somewhere else to like, oh, damn, you know what? I was a fucking... I was robbing motherfuckers at first. I got to go back to that. I mean, what he said, he says, what happens is that everybody gets safe and when everyone gets safe and nobody tries anything, things get boring. I see a lot of unfunny comedians. I see unfunny TV shows. I see unfunny award shows. He's absolutely I see right. Unfunny mo I see unfunny movies because people are scared to make a move that's not a good place to be. Exactly. He's and, that, and that's not and that's not a good place to be. He's that, everyone's scared to make a move. Yeah, you gotta understand, he's absolutely right. What he's saying is the people are too soft. Yeah. Everybody's friends. We're friends. Don't say that. Are you fucking kidding me? If Red Fox didn't Red Fox? Mm -hmm. If you really if you really think about it, Bill Cosby could have been canceled in the 60s when he told people there were some holes in the Bible. Hmm. He did a skit called Noah. <laughs> it's brilliant. But it was so smart and people are so going, okay, I'm listening, I'm listening. Yeah, that does make sense. How do I know what an ark is? I've never seen an ark. So nowadays... Everybody wants to point fingers and they, because it's fun. Hey, that's hey, whoa, 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 whoa. But you gotta say these. If if a, somebody loses what they do for a living to feed their family, they go and feed their family. Mm. That's the last thing you want to be is uh, <laughs> in a bank and this motherfucker come in and said, "I used to do comedy, but this is my new shit." <laughs> Thanks for the mask, by the way. <laughs> Click clack. <laughs> <'Cause I'm> not... <laughs> now cancel this motherfucker. So they, they... Well, <laughs> well since, since last time, it's interesting you bring up Bill Cosby, right? Because I actually interviewed Tom Messero, who was the lawyer for Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. Right? He was also Michael Jackson's lawyer in his uh, 2005 uh, case. Yeah. Which he won. Now the Bill Cosby case got lost. But he said something very interesting, and I actually looked all this up afterwards. Yeah. 
So essentially what he said was the Bill Cosby case was the most unfair trial he's ever participated. Yes. And, and this is what, and this is, he said, why? Because essentially what happened was there was a civil case back in the day where a girl claims that the Bill Cosby, you know, drugged her or whatever. It was a civil case. There was a deposition and there was a deal made with the DA yes. that there will never be, that this will be sealed forever and there won't be any charges brought up for Cosby in terms of this particular case. Now, fast forward to however many years, there's a judge who's in charge of Bill Cosby's case who hates that DA with a fucking passion. Right. The two of them were arch enemies. They both ran for DA. The judge lost. And then the DA brought up some sort of case where the judge was cheating with someone, I guess, like in his offices. And the whole thing got brought up and the, and the, the, the DA made the woman that he was cheating with sit next to his wife and do all this other kind of humiliating shit, <laughs> right? So then when the trial came up, the judge was like, oh, the DA said that he's going to seal this and it's never going to come out? Fuck him. I'm unsealing it. And then that opened up the whole thing to Bill yes. Cosby becoming becoming found, you know, was found guilty in a court of law because the judge threw all this out that was supposed to be actually completely, you know, put together legally because he hates that DA so much. Yes. And the phrase was taken out of context, by the way. I mean, I can could, I could pull any phrase and go, Vlad, you said here, faggot. Did you not say it? Well, I said it, but I was talking to Faison about canceled. Did you say it, Vlad? Right, right. I, I was quoting Eddie Murphy. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Did you say it? You said it Did right here. It? There you go. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. Yeah. Roll it. And they want to just, and that's the same thing with that whole shit is a sham. Right. But you know, you know another part of this situation, which is interesting, because I actually brought in the private investigator yeah. that was on Bill Cosby's case. And what he told me, which I, I, I didn't remember, was after Cosby was found guilty, before the sentencing happened, Cosby's wife thought it was a good idea to write a really nasty letter to the judge, calling the judge racist and saying how it was unfair and all that. And they think that because of that letter, that's why Cosby got all those years. It ultimately should have been just whatever probation she, or listen, a few months. As as a wife, she should have did that. No, yes because and no. there's no there's law and then there's she as a wife, she has nothing to do with the case. That's like you right. writing in saying blah 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 blah. She has nothing to do with the jurisdiction, nothing to do with the case, but because the law is bullshit. They go, hey, you wrote this letter, Mrs. Cosby? We're gonna, he shouldn't be in jail anyway. Yes, yes. But you have to understand that you're dealing with human beings. Exactly. So fuck the law. feelings so and there emotions. Is no law. Right. I get it. I get it. But what I'm saying... What I'm saying is this was not a great move to do before the sentencing. Now, if you want to do it after the sentencing or I, if you I, want to go on a fucking tirade and say, you, fuck this I judge, hear what you're saying. it's cool. Hindsight is twenty twenty, But as yeah. a woman who's been with this man for 40 years, 50 years. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? She's feeling something. I she's like, it. you know, before you even sentence, this is how I feel. Because I think I right. know how this is going to run. And I'm not, I didn't talk to her about it. Nothing. I'm just saying that's just a, a real relate. That's a real person. You're, you're dealing with real people. Right. But let me tell you <laughs> recently, you know, and this kind of, this kind of reminds me of something that hit closer to home. ARAB recently got sentenced to 45 years. Oh shit. Yeah. 45 years at 38 years old. He's getting out as, at like 83. If he has to just, uh, I think they, they charged him with drug dealing. I think there might have been a, a murder intermixed in there someplace. There was a snitch that, that came in. This is all alleged. I don't I don't really know. But, you know, there was a snitch that was in the camp that testified against everyone and so forth. But 
I, I brought it, and this, and this really killed me because A.R. Rab is someone who I really fucked with. He had been I, on my show I a bunch with him of too. times. I didn't even. I, didn't, I, I, I love. I love. Yeah. Trust I me. love A.R. Rab. I think he's super talented. Yeah. Super stand up dude. He was whenever he wanted to do Vlad TV, he always had an open door. I featured his videos, everything else like that. But I brought in this lawyer named uh, Mo Gangat, uh, aka uh, Lawyer for Workers. You, you may have seen his videos floating around. But I had him basically break down all these cases from a, a lawyer's perspective, because you know you and I are, are outsiders, right? Legally, what happened? So he told me about how tragic this ARAB sentencing was. Because he was found guilty. Okay. There was a wide range you could have gotten. Anything from like, I think, 15 years to, to 45. Huge, huge range for these types of things. He comes in and at the end of the sentencing, which is only, only supposed to take 5, 10, 20 minutes, whatever. The judge said, you know, uh, you know Mr. A.R.A.B., whatever, whatever his real name is, you know, during the course of me reading off the sentencing, you have been, your arms have been crossed. You've been like huffing and puffing. You've been rolling your eyes. It does not seem like you have any regret over anything you've done. So therefore, I'm going to give you the full 45 years. And, and what the lawyer, what, what, what Mo told me was like, he blames ARAB's lawyer because as this is happening and he sees his client doing this, he needs to have a recess, pull him outside and say, look, I understand you're upset. I understand this is bullshit, but you have to keep your composure right now because, you know, this judge is going to give you 20 extra fucking years, you know, and you just need to just be nice, presentable, smile, look like you're upset, whatever you need to do to get past this 20 minutes, because 45 years is not, is not a reward for doing what you just did. And, you know, he blames the lawyer. And it's so fucked up. Forty five years. It's part, like he it's may part never... of it because, uh, yeah, I mean, that's. I said I was going to teach a class on how to be in front of a jury. Right. <laughs> that's some of my best acting ever in front of a jury, <laughs> and because your demeanor, really, they they look at you the whole time, the whole time, and, and when, that's what I'm saying. When it comes to the judge and the jury. You can't just keep it real. You you have to play a role to get through that, and then you go on with your life. You know, yeah. there's no I think he there's no he wins for something. being tough in a court. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he like I'm getting something. I'm not because, but you're right. I mean, if I would have been there, I'd have been like, bro, let me show you. This is this is gonna be acting one on one. Yeah. You know, first of all, take a lunch, write your name on it, put it right there by you. <laughs> Oh, you know, there's certain little things that de is details that mm -hmm. jurors look at. And they go, oh, he bought his lunch. He has a sack lunch? Lunch. And <laughs> when it's time to go lunch, you go in the corner and you just eat by yourself. Right. They, they, they see this like, where's this monster? Where's this yeah. dope dealer? Where's this? It's, it's details like that. People understand from the time you leave your house to the time you're in that courtroom, you're being looked at by jurors. And the judge. Yes. And the judge already has, he has your book. He has your book right here. Um, and, and, and some judges... I tell you what happened to me first time. Um, this was eighty two. I, I can't remember. It had to be ninety, eighty nine. I'm picked up for trafficking a controlled substance, and but they were wrong. Okay, and. The whole shit was wrong. I go to court, and, the, and and back then what they used to do, they used to mark the money, like they would mark the money. So, and a and a and a, uh, a fake guy would come up to you, hey, let me get whatever, 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 and th they mark the money, and you and when they put they do the raid, you got that marked money on you. Here it is. 
So they pull me over. There's, there's, there's no mark. There's no mark money. They take me in. Boom, beat me up. Take me in. <laughs> Where's the money? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I had like a hundred forty dollars on me. Something like we was going. It was it was all wrong. I go. They you know, beat me up. Take me to Van Nuys off Irma Street, right around the corner from you. Um, and the worst thing people do is hire a big fancy attorney. I'm gonna tell you why. Because if you got that kind of money, you making money somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay? You have to, it's all an act. So what I did, I got a, um, uh, um, my my uh, Mr. Green, Mr. Green, Mr. Green was my um, public defender. He comes see me. So Mr. Love, I don't see why they arrested you. You don't have any rocks. You don't have any um money. I said, yeah, I'm a comedian. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? <clears throat> yeah, I don't understand. What, what, uh... He goes this. <laughs> my mother bails me out. My father's like, no, that nigga was doing something. <laughs> Father, that nigga was doing something. <laughs> now, I've got the invite to do Apollo. This is a day but after I have to see the judge. And the judge is going to, you know, the... um. Preliminary hearing. Um, I think that's what it's called. Is that what it's called? Uh, yes. So the judge goes, I go in there, and I'm like, if if she sends me to jail, I can't do the Apollo. This is Apollo in 1989. It was huge. So the judge says, Mr. Love, there's no drugs found on you, and there's no marked money. I see your mother in here. I see your father in here. I'm going to give you benefit of the doubt. I'm going to put you on probation for a year. If you come back in my court before then, I'm going to give you this time and that time. Right? The next day, I was on a plane to do Apollo. So that judge, with her just thinking and me, you know what I'm saying, and the way how, you know what I'm saying, was like, I come back, I do the Apollo. I'm about to do Baby's Kids, though, you know, I come back. She said, hey, Mr. Love, sorry, blah, 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 this was a blah, 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 blah. And can enjoy, enjoy your life as a comedian. And that's. Well, well, hold on a sec. Hold on. If you, if the judge thought you didn't do anything, why were you given probation? Because she Shouldn't gave me the be benefit a, of the doubt. But isn't probation, don't you have to plead guilty to get probation? Hell no. No? No. I thought probation comes with, that's a penalty. No. If you didn't do anything wrong, you don't get probation. Listen to me. A judge can put you on probation. Just to see, because she's right. If I'm going back, it's going to be before probation ends. I'm okay. going to come in there with weed in my pocket, smelling like weed. I'm going to fuck up. Okay. All right. I don't know how it works. I'm telling you how I, it works. I don't know how it works. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I believe you. I believe you. I just thought that probation comes with some level of guilty plea. Whether it's to a lesser charge or whatever, no, I don't know. Um, no, you know, if was... you're innocent, I just assume if you're innocent, if you did nothing, and it's proven that you didn't done nothing, and they drop charges, there's no probation. She basically with the um, held the trial for a year. The probation was a year. Okay, so she held I got you. held going through all that. We didn't go through. It was. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so technically, you weren't found. 
innocent, but they weren't going to try to find you guilty for a year. It wasn't enough evidence to say. If you didn't do anything, say, they'll, 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 just, yeah, they'll just drop it. It wasn't okay, enough. It, it. Yeah, it wasn't enough evidence to say, hey, you. If, if there would have been, if they would have found dope and money, or just the money, the marked money, that'd have been like, it's marked. How'd you get the marked money? Yeah, she was like, I don't. You know, she knew the cops was fucking up back then. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But she's like, you know, why are you in that area? I can't ask you that. But if you are, you'll be back. <laughs> you'll be back. I'm not tripping. <laughs> when I told her I was a comedian, she's like, okay, that's funny. But okay, let's see. <laughs> you imagine <laughs> you standing from the judge telling you're a comedian and you've been arrested for selling cocaine. Okay. Well, you and Chris Tucker have always been super close. Yes. Were you friends with him when he was part of the Michael Jackson trial? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't. I, well, that's like one of the biggest mistakes. I think that's why I go for Bill Cosby so hard because, um, Chris said, "Hey, man, Michael wants you to come over here." I'm like, "Ain't he fucking kids or some shit?" <laughs> it was the dumbest thing I ever said in my life. I sound stupid saying it. So Chris was like, man, he, he, he played with my kids. I was like, really? <laughs> 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 right? And they was hanging out. Him, Eddie Griffin, they was all hanging out. Yeah, I interviewed Griffin, uh, Eddie Griffin as well about it, yeah. And um, it was one of the dumbest things I've ever done and said um, because I started watching the trial and um, I was like, that motherfucker is innocent. He got to trial late. Yeah. Well, Eddie, Eddie Griffin told I, me that story. He, he drove, Michael went in his limo, yes. and there were so many people, they couldn't even get into the courtroom because there were so many people let, let me blocking their way. Let me explain something. When you guilty, you at court before it opened. Yeah. You don't even want to be, when you guilty, a guilty man. You heard about the thing, a guilty, guilty, guilty uh, prisoners go to sleep. Um, innocent ones stay up. When you guilty, mm -hmm. you are there before the doors open, coffee, looking, is this the right courtroom? Because you know, Michael was like, this is some bullshit. Well, when, I saw I him, when I saw him dance on top, top of the car, I said, oh no. <laughs> well, that was after he won. No, was it was not. No, it was after he won. No, it was not. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I know you're wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. It was the first I'm, I'm day he gonna... got there with pajamas. I was like, he's innocent. I fucked up. I owe him an apology. And I was like, and I, I saw his brothers. You know, he got real brothers. <laughs> Jermaine and them, they think they a joke. Tino and them, they real, they real, they real. <laughs> They will whoop your ass. You you talking about a, a celebrity? You put them in a put them in a the ring. They ain't bullshit. You think it's a game <laughs> with them Jacksons? <laughs> they not bullshit. They like real men. They like real tough men. They not bullshit. Well, I interviewed uh I interviewed Tom Massaro, who yeah. was his lawyer. Yeah. Right. Uh Tom said that the prosecution is a travesty of justice and one of the most mean spirited attacks of an innocent person in legal history. Yes. All 14 charges were dropped. Yes. Like, it was like, I believe, 10 felonies and four misdemeanors. All of them dropped. And so I actually interviewed Tom Messero and the private investigator who's in charge of all this. Yes. Who's in charge of, of Michael's case. And what they said was kind of interesting was that the family of the so-called victim the mother had a history of scamming and an, an immense history. She uh, she basically was caught stealing at JCPenney and then got 150000 
saying that the the security guard sexually a- assaulted her. Yeah. And, and 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 ripped her clothes and whatever. Yeah. Whereas in the but they showed the mugshot and her clothes are perfect. She was also doing welfare fraud. They they found so much shit on her that she had to take the Fifth Amendment and not even testify because she would have to she would end up implicating herself in other crimes. She sounds like my baby mama. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> but but Chris Tucker actually took the stand in this trial. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess what had happened was the family said that something like Chris knew about it and knew about the molestation and, and was, was bringing the kids to Michael. Yeah. When the real story was, was that Chris was on his way to Florida on a private flight. The family, he became kind of cool with that family. Yeah. And they said, hey, hey, uh, Michael wants to see us. Can we tag along on your on your flight? And he's like, uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. And they and they went and they went to go find Michael in Florida, and Michael didn't even know they were coming. Nor nor did Chris know anything about this whole thing. The whole thing ended up being a scam. It's a sham. All this shit is a sham, man. So what did Chris Tucker tell you about that case and and in terms of his involvement in it? After I sounded so ignorant, he he never said anything else. Cause Mike Chris loves Michael Jackson. I mean. All day long, he would dream about when he met Michael Jackson, and do that, dude. He'd do this shit all day long, I'm like fuck. And uh, <laughs> of course, I love Michael Jackson. And then um, we started hearing all this bullshit, and and you hearing it in your head, and you going, "Yeah, they said. Well, why would they lie? That's that's when we didn't understand there was a narrative. Because you got to say, Michael Jackson was not a dumb man." Absolutely not. He owned, he was one of the biggest property holders in California. Do you know that Neverland is 2,800 acres? Yeah, I've been, well, I've been outside of it. I haven't been inside. Right, but that's 2,800 acres. Yeah. You know what that's Huge. worth? Well, it just got sold. How much, for how much? Uh, let's see here. Neverland Ranch. Here we go. It was put on the market for 100 million in 2016. It was recently sold for 22 million. See, that that's a bargain. It's a bargain. That's a yes. bargain. In 20 they thought it was 100 million in 100 2016. It's 2021. Back then, you know what it was worth? Yeah, it was worth yeah, oh, probably over 100 million. Right. I mean, I think I think the whole place, because of leaving Neverland or whatever else, it definitely dropped the value of. <laughs> but it's know, still to buy it. whoever who bought 20, that. Two, two, yeah, twenty two million is still twenty two million. It's twenty eight hundred you know, acres. That, you know that's basically Santa Barbara. Yeah, like the whole the whole city. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone lives on on. on. Michael Jackson's compound, and it's not far from Santa Barbara. Where's the uh, you know? yeah, yeah it, no, it's right there by Santa Barbara. Like yeah, I said, I, he, I've been I've been there, but look, I've been to the front gate just to check it out. Yeah, you know, no I, one actually let me in. I, but. I, I, I listen when I met the Jacksons. I said, man, I'm so sorry. I wish I would been there for your brother, man, because uh, you know I was so stupid. Because you know, they all brought me in like family. Because you know, and I was like, that's one of that's when I said. I'm going to listen every time before I hear it because it don't make sense. It's like, what the fuck you mean? It's like, Bill Cosby's raping people only in Hollywood? Bill Cosby travels every fucking where. London, Canada, nobody over there was raped. But it's the narrative. So that's why, I, you know, I've really been you know, so people, ooh, I, 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 I investigate before, you know. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I mean, after speaking to people that were close to the actual case, it seems to me that Michael Jackson was innocent and a lot of this was a shakedown. It's, and it's keep awful. in mind, it, you know, and the thing is, is that the first accuser that happened years before, they're saying that Michael Jackson settled with him for $20 million. And Tom Massaro said that Michael told him that that was the worst mistake of his life. Yes. He said that during that time, 
his the, the the insurance company and and like you know some of his advisors are saying look michael you're gonna make way more money this just just settle and you can go forward with your life and put it all behind you and it won't happen again or whatever but the, the reality is is that once people saw that 20 million number they're like oh okay i could do that it's too. a sign yeah because free they, money they, here yeah yeah it's a sign uh that's that's what's going that, that's we just had a, a whole thing of it. after bill cosby here comes a me too movement I was listening to all the, I'm like, what the fuck you mean the guy jacked off in the shower and you couldn't leave the house? He's in the fucking shower. Leave. Right. Yeah, no, listen, I, I got a problem with all this stuff. If you want to, if someone sexually assaulted you or raped you or whatever, go to the police. Thank you. File the police Thank report. You. Take a DNA test. Take a rape kit. Put the guy in prison. And, and if you want to file a civil suit afterwards, which you will automatically get because you have a guilty verdict for this rapist, go ahead and do it. But to say that this man sexually assaulted me 384 years ago and there's no witnesses, there's no evidence, there, there's there's no cameras, there's it's no, the you best know, setup ever. photographs weren't invented back then. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's the best like we have a black and white. Ever. Like how maybe, can you get a Vince yeah. or no? I, I can be, um, uh, um, uh, sentence with no evidence. I feel you. I feel you. Just but, show you know, me some time. This is the time we live in, and this Bill shit is Clinton, happening. Bill Clinton had the girl brought out nut all still on the dress. <laughs> she still had nut on the dress, like oh, oh, oh. <laughs> pass went right past through there. <laughs> well. I was looking through some of your catalog this morning. Uh -huh. And you were in like 80 some movies and TV shows? 80s? Uh, yeah. I mean, the first, I started, like I said, back then, 89, 80, 80, 80, 80 yeah, 89. No, I meant like the total number is like 80 something. Oh, yeah, roles. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, was Elf the biggest movie you've ever been in? Kind of. Um, Elf, yes, Elf and, yes, Elf in the South African film. Elf and, um, Friday, I believe. But Elf is, okay. yeah. Yeah. Right. And Grand Theft Auto, no, I'm <laughs> Right. You played, you played a voice in that. Um, and you're, you're close friends with John Favreau. Yes. It's my brother. I saw an interview uh, there was a clip from James Kahn, who played the, the father in that film. And he said that the Elf sequel originally didn't happen because Will Ferrell and the director, John Favreau, didn't get along too well during the production of the first film. Yeah, we was going to beat Will's ass. <laughs> Will was acting <laughs> like a little bitch. Um, I know you want to hear this. Um, What happened exactly? I'm trying to see how far I can. Well, Will didn't trust John's judgment from day one. Okay. Okay. And um, <laughs> basically tried to get a, what they call it when everybody's, come on, we out of here. I'm like. A walkout? Yeah. Like, like, he's like, you think what we're doing is right? I was like, yeah. I'm looking at you, Dre. He came to my trailer like, what are you thinking about? I'm like, I thought he was fucking with me. He's like, you think this is funny? And he's dressed as Elf. I'm like, is he fucking with me? <laughs> is, is, it, is, it, is, it, is this real? So after the movie was done, they teamed up with John. John was, you know, he, you know, he was fucking... A nervous wreck because the film that he saw in his head, they weren't allowed him to do. And he, and, you know, his creative space was off. So, you know, it was a bad energy. So I would just go and over there and fuck with him. You know, uh, you know, family time. But I'm like, no, fuck him. Do your movie. So he pushed through. All that bullshit. And um, 
So they don't do this anymore, but back then they would have they would hire film companies to test the movie. Mm-hmm. And it's very expensive. John paid for this test of his cut. Pay for the test, and the movie tested crazy. So I believe he handed in the test with the movie, like, suck my dick. Look at this. But John would never say that. I said that. <laughs> Sent, gave him um, the movie company. New Line did a test, and it tests even higher. But then they told Will Ferrell, Fuck off. Fuck the fuck off. And that's why. I remember going to a party at, um, right after. <laughs> so John and I, you know, we there, and uh, Will's there. And um, Will doesn't know I know all this shit. Um, Will's here, and John's here, and they're back towards each other. And I'm looking, I'm talking, I'm going, hey, Will, how you doing? Talk to John. <laughs> hey, John, Will's <laughs> I'm fucking, <laughs> it's good to be, I'm fucking with everyone. We're at the, um, my guy who created, ah, uh, I said, I love this guy too. He created New Line Cinema. Such a nice guy. Um, we got his house. Um, really nice guy. My, you know, Robert Shea? Robert, Robert Shea. Shea? Bob Shea. Yeah. We're at his house. Um, and um, I mean, everybody's there, you know. Uh, and uh, John and I are sitting there. This is after the movie comes out. It's a huge success. And they're not talking to each other. I'm like, and that's when, um, okay. But so now there's, you know, to this date, that movie hasn't made me money. You know that? Wait, well, that movie had a budget of $33 million. It grossed. Worldwide, two hundred twenty-three million, and went on to have reruns forever. So obviously, you're lying still to not, me right now. It's still not uh, uh, um, prop, in a profit. Yeah, okay. Someone, someone's fudging those numbers. If you're not getting royalties off that shit, oh no, someone, no, I get royal, Yeah, yeah, but um, that's you know, John signed up for something different. He was like, yeah, but yeah, that's that's their. Okay. Same company that was well, Friday. Yeah, well, I mean, clearly, though, John Favreau's career went down afterwards. I mean, <laughs> only he was only able to do Avengers and Star Wars and other low-budget films. And, you know, uh, <laughs> if he needs any help, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll set up a GoFundMe so he can pay his rent. <laughs> no, he, he's good. He's very good. <laughs> he's he's extremely good. He's extremely good. Um, well, you're also in Players Club. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we went from yeah, yeah. to Players Club. <laughs> and uh, recently, well, not recently, I think a couple of months ago, there was like talk over people redoing Players Club. Uh, Drea and Jocelyn both said that they want to star in the remake of Players Club. I, I never heard of it. I mean, I didn't hear of it. I never. I mean, Drea, I could Who's maybe Drea? see. I mean, well, she's, uh, I mean, what is she known for? I mean, she's done some reality TV, I guess. Oh. And she's kind of like a kind of like a social media she's celebrity. House, she got some. Um, I mean, Atlanta something like something. that. I, mean, I forget what exactly she's. You don't even, even know what she for. does. <laughs> she I'm does. not quite sure what she does. She has a baby with some athlete. You know, no. she got two kids. I, I I don't know. Anyways, see that I mean, Jocelyn she, Hern, Jocelyn Hernandez from Love and Hip Hop. I don't see her pulling it off. Um, Jocelyn, I think she would be a good character in a, as a waitress in or the something. movie. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, know, but there you go. Does it, you know, she has a, that great accent or whatever. But um, Lisa Ray, man, you know, Ice Cube put together that. Uh, you know, he put together that. You know, that is, uh, you know, the P- Cube is very underrated when it comes to the film shit. I agree. Um, it's, it's, it's two, I agree. It's two people that are underrated. Is um, I know you know <laughs> Master P and Ice Cube when it comes to because everything you see now is it, that's where you know Master P was doing his own. You know, 
if you haven't put rappers in the top five, to me, the greatest rapper ever would be Master P. Under, under a rapper or a business person? Just the rappers ever. Because okay. he had white people calling him master. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, but there you he, have it. He, he had, uh, he was making films and deals and, you know, and, and, and doing them out of his pocket. And that independent world is, that's what we live in now. I mean, yeah, hold on. Uh, I mean, look up the. Robert Townsend and um, Robert Townsend started it. Spike Lee is, of course, well, but, you know, Robert Townsend, for sure, you know. Well, yeah, I remember when I interviewed Eddie Griffin, he said that Master P cut him a check for a million dollars for the script for Foolish. Now, when's that? that the biggest when, check. When's that, when's that? When's that been done? That was the biggest check he got up to that point from Master P. But uh, that's what I'm saying. From somebody, th- that's that's huge. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, yeah. I, I don't. I, what what writers get the million dollars now? Yeah, I don't know how much scripts go for, but is a million dollars for a script? Is that considered just immense? What? That's that's. It's got to be some Marvel Part Three. <laughs> uh, Hulk fights soup, soup, black Superman, black <laughs> Terminator. It's, it's got, yeah, scripts, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. People overlook Ice Cube's contribution and Master P's. I was like, man, it's, it's phenomenal. No, I feel you. Well, you were also in the movie Torque with Ice Cube. I, yeah, I got fired from that movie. <laughs> you got fired. Did I tell you that? Nah. <laughs> what happened? I couldn't figure. The director was Joseph Kahn, and I couldn't figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do because there was no lo- scripts. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm a fucking extra. What the fuck? Is, the fuck am I doing? Am I a mechanic? I'm just riding around, and it was hot. But they paid me a lot of money. <laughs> So I couldn't, so I was like, ah. So I called Q, I'm like, Q, what the fuck am I doing? So I don't know, I don't know really what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you killed me with the Ice Cube at impersonation. Like I, I it, it always hits me. It always hits me way too hard. Like <laughs> I'm never ready for it. But I really called him like, hey man, what? he's like, I don't know we either. We gonna, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I said, uh, maybe I'm the mechanic. So I go to the, hey, maybe I'm the mechanic, and you know, I need. No, no, you're just one of the posse. What fucking posse? There's no fucking posse. The fuck you mean posse? So one day it's hot as a motherfucker. We're shooting in Desert Springs, Palm Desert. And we're outside, and we would just they would just set us up the poles like this. So they wanted me inside the truck. I was like, okay, cool. I can sit in the air conditioning while they shoot the scene. But he says, no, we're, we keep here. We keep hearing the truck run. Cut the air conditioning off. I'm like, damn. So I did it one time, and it's like 200 degrees. Whew. Cut the truck back on. Um, I'm sweating. He's on cut the truck off. I mean, if I didn't cuss everybody out on this goddamn set. <laughs> I mean, motherfuck this stupid ass, motherfucking, fuck this, boo, bullshit ass, motherfucking. By the time I get to, I mean, the, the producer, this is a guy who does all the uh, Fast and Furious movies. He goes, you're fired. I'm like, you fired, motherfucker. Fuck this stupid movie. Nobody's gonna ever see this piece of bullshit because niggas don't wear leather in the fucking heat. Stupid motherfuckers. I'm talking a gang of shit. 
I see Cube over there. He what? He's laughing, but he's like, this nigga crazy. So I'm in. I'm getting a van to take me back to the hotel. I had the nerve to tell him to take me back to the hotel in a van, which was like an hour away. <laughs> like, take me to the hotel. <laughs> As I'm in advance, it goes, Faison, I got two calls. You're fired. I'm like, good. No, you can't fire me, motherfucker. I quit. Fuck this dumbass movie. Stupid. Blah, 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 blah. Ten minutes later, Faison, listen. You're not fired. <laughs> I had been in so many scenes, they couldn't just fire me. <laughs> just standing around like this and shit going, uh. It's like, so could you come back to the set uh, and apologize? And I just got married. I was like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow, but not today. I need to cool off. <laughs> so um, <laughs> went to the pool, cooled off. Um, next day I went there and I was like, listen, okay, guys, listen. All right. Apologize to the whole set because you know it was, it was all good and finished working with the movie. But then I told uh, John. Uh, John had a TV show back then called um, Dinner for Five, and um, I was like, John just finished the worst movie ever. Ain't nobody going to see this fucking movie. <laughs> and then uh, the movie comes out. It makes like seven dollars. Right. Well, it had a had a budget of forty million. It made. Forty six point five million over what eighty months uh, to date, right? right. What well, basically it doesn't sound like a profitable film because once you take away the cut that the movie theater gets and whatever that forty six forty million dollars was over what ancillary and everything. That's not. I know when it came out, it didn't make no money. It was like the fuck yeah. is this? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I haven't even watched it. Nobody knows about this mysterious it. movie. <laughs> Things on an ice cube did in the desert. <laughs> with motorcycles. <laughs> and then they did another, they were doing another movie just like called Biker Boys. Okay, I remember that. We were shooting the movie at the same time. <laughs> we were using each other's sets. <laughs> <laughs> they were shooting on the top of the downtown freeway and we were at the bottom. They were like, what, what, <laughs> what are you, what, what biker set? Uh, well, I'm Biker Boys. Oh yeah, we're torque. You're up there. We're down here. <laughs> it was really crazy. the Rough Riders made made money that year. They all it was one. Like, I mean, and you were in, I mean a lot of stuff. When I was looking at some of the, just the, the kind of the random stuff you did, listen, were you in the doc? Were you in the Doctor Dre keep their heads ringing video? I was there. Yes, okay. me and Chris came up there. Uh, um, we shot out in the um, Mojave Desert. With the airplanes, the airplane, um, um, I call it the airplane funeral. It's nothing but all these airplanes. Mm -hmm. the airplane, um, nothing but airplanes there. And um, we party like a mug. Man, we used to have some fun. We party like a motherfucker. That's when um, yeah, Dr. J came in in a helicopter. We were like, oh, man, Dre in the helicopter, man. We used to have so much fun, yeah. I'm in that video, the Friday video. Uh, were you were you in the uh, the Outcast Roses video? Yep. Yeah. What I was mean, that like? What was that like to work with the? It's Outcast? like I only do the guys I like. You know, I mean, um, I've always been a fan of Ice Cube, and um, you know, um, I knew Easy. You know, but um, Dre and um, Three Thousand. I mean, you know, me and uh, Big Boy is, is cousins. So, oh, okay. So, um, didn't know that. Yeah, I love. I've been loving them. They, their music is so crazy. We found that out while we were doing um, Idaho, um, mm. which was done by Brian Barber, which was uh, that was one of my favorites right there. How they did it, it was it, it was just too maybe before its time, but we had a great time doing that and. Uh, uh, yeah, Idaho was uh, it was before his time. Well, 
are you working on an animated film called Fuck Child Support? <laughs> or is that just Wikipedia trolling that, that I found? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, we're trying to put together something because I'm going through this with my um, a wombat. Um, um, this... <laughs> Yo, you called her a wombat. <laughs> this wombat had my beautiful daughter. I have a beautiful daughter who I haven't seen in a year because they use the children as um, rants for ransom. And now the courts are joining in with them. Yes, that is ransom. Would you like to see your daughter, Mr. Love? Yeah. What the fuck do you have to do with me seeing my daughter? So... The wombat um, is making it difficult because I'm missing a lot of precious time with my daughter. And the wombat's a, a legal alien. I'm like, how, does, how do you get all this fucking leeway to do this shit? But it's under the law. The law is bullshit. Like, how, how does she do this? Is she not even supposed to be? She's not even American. The fuck is this? So, yeah, we're trying, we're putting together something that exposes. Because men, have, we have no rights in, in that courtroom. And you have to hire somebody to teach you. And I've, I've found a great person, um, it's Tiffany Craig in um, uh, Florida. She's she's so good and down the road. She's she's good. So um, yeah, my next court appearance is on my birthday. So we are filming the, the whole process of it. <laughs> okay. Fuck child support. <laughs> it's ransom. Uh well, you're in a new movie that's coming out called She Ball. They can your boy. Right. Uh, now, did Birdman put this out through his film company? I don't know what's going on, because we did this film a couple, you know, a while ago, and Birdman was involved, and then this person. Um, I don't know. Nick's got to answer that. I'm just like, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm a red light player, whatever. Whatever Nick needs, you know. Um, but we shot this probably about four years ago, three years. Ago. Oh, okay, right. Because you're in it. You mentioned Nick Cannon, Chris Brown. Yeah. Uh, Cedric the Entertainer, DC Young Fly, Evan Ross. Yeah, it's a nice little cast. Yeah, it's a nice little cast. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you shot it, you know. So I don't know. Uh, they wanted me to sign something. A couple of weeks ago, I'm like, yeah, here, here. I mean, whatever, whatever Nick needs, he's good. There was a video you posted uh, on your Instagram of some dude claiming that you stole a stimulus check. That's Omar Bradley. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> He'll always be the mayor of Compton. Oh, Omar Bradley, it's my partner. Uh, True, uh, you know, uh, he's he's a good, he's been um, a confidant of mine for years. I mean, you know, he saw me uh, for years in, in Hollywood going the wrong way. And he's like, Faison, let me tell you, you're doing it wrong, man. You're doing this wrong, Faison. Very good brother, Omar Bradley. Um, He's a, he's, a, he's a good brother. Love him to death. Well, I mean, what you were saying was a joke, but actually, uh, this is a real thing in terms of people scamming PPP loans and everything else like that. I mean, in fact, we just posted a story about a guy from a, that was on Love & Hip Hop ATL, a guy named Mo Fain, who just got sentenced to 12 and a half years Whoa! For, for stimulus fraud. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I don't fuck with none of that shit. Yeah. Uh, Im imagine, imagine, like, 
taking a relatively, I mean, what did he get? Let me see. So he basically got $2 million in PPP loans. He bought 85,000 in jewelry, paid off a bunch of personal debts, including child support that he owed at the time. Wow. That's how he got it there. See? And is now doing 12 and a half years. Yeah. There now, is no- I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a mathematician, but that math don't add up to ball out for a couple of months and then- I keep telling people, I was like, years. there is no magical free money the government is giving you where yeah. you can go buy a Lamborghini. You know what I mean? Lamborghini showed up in Atlanta after the ugly ass, them ugly ass, <laughs> little ugly ass I mean, that's not even a real fucking Lamborghini. Them little ugly ass Lamborghinis just shot apart. I'm like, that, that's stupid. But they, there is no free money. There's nothing, there is no shortcut. No. Nah, we didn't take anything. Because our thing, they were like, yo, you get a free loan, blah, 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 you don't have to pay it back. And I'm like, look, our company did well in 2020. We did not want to take a check for them to come back and say, well, we went through your records. It didn't look, look like you really needed the money. Fuck that. So therefore, give us back all the money, plus pay another 50% penalty, or go to jail. Or go to jail after paying the penalty. Fuck all that. We didn't Fuck take nothing. That. You're not open. Yeah, there. That gives them a reason to go in your shit. Right. I'm good. Yeah. And it gets publicly listed. Like whoever took money is publicly listed for everyone to see. Nah, I'm good. Look for no my name on that motherfucker. It'd be like <laughs> Exactly. <pew! laughs> well, I recently interviewed John Sally and we talked about his big ass I house. Know, I can't even I can't even call it a mansion. Like it's just a, a fucking cathedral or, or something. Uh, and he talked about it uh in our interview. Now you were actually the one that mentioned it to me originally. Yeah, I stayed in that spooky ass house. You stayed in it. I went to go pick right. up T.K. And, Kirkland. Right. And, and you know, it's kind of like in our line of work, when someone says mansion, it's like, okay, yeah, we all got mansions, whatever. But that's not a mansion. That that was something completely different. It was like, what, uh, 40, 50,000 square feet? Listen, when you drive up, it's a circular driveway that you can fit a hundred cars in. Huh. It ain't like, I'm like, where, where do you park? He says, it's park, it, it was like, I'm like <laughs> what the fuck? It, it, it was, it was, yes, that was balling out of control. And I remember the, the stairs was like, oh, oh. <laughs> this house was amazing and spooky. <laughs> oh yeah. And Which he ultimately ended up selling, and now they're kind of redoing it and, and remodeling it. But uh, yeah, man, I was just happy because you know that that's a homie. So, of mine, so are, like, are they wow. selling it now? I believe so. I, I, or I think it might be a museum right now, and they're gearing up to sell it. But they basically gutted it all out and remodeled it. You could actually go online and see what it looks like now, and it's like really modern and gorgeous. So, what are they selling it for? Uh, I don't think it's for sale yet. I think it's still part of the remodel. I know what he sold it for. I don't remember off the top of my head, but he mentioned in the interview, and it wasn't a huge amount. He just wanted to get out of it. He had moved to Miami, and he was like, all right, I'm not yeah, going back was, there. Yeah, he, he was, yeah, he was He was lonely in that big-ass house. That, <laughs> I bet. We stayed over the, I stayed over the galley. Like, they had rooms over the galley. <laughs> and um, that was like, because it was a kitchen. It was like huge, like, you know, some of you, See in a hotel. Mm. And um, yeah, it was crazy. Well, you know, you talked about working with Ice Cube for a bunch of years. Uh, recently, Sir Jinx is suing Ice Cube for unpaid royalties. <laughs> Did you hear about that? <laughs> it comes with the territory. I mean, <laughs> I didn't hear about it. Jinx is crazy. Man. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know Jinx? Yeah. Okay. Come on, man. Jinx, man, Jinx. Come on, man. <laughs> Jinx's birthday coming up pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. I mean, All of my birthdays be... are same, around the same time. Well, when's your birthday? June 14th. I'm June 28th. Cube's 15th. I think Jinx is the 6th or the 9th. Uh, there we go, man. We should all celebrate together. We have a party. Have a, have a big, big party. <laughs> well, according to Ice Cube, 
he said that he had given Jinx a whole bunch of loans over the years that he never paid back and doesn't feel like he owes him anything. Yeah. People forget about that part. You know, I mean, you know, they, you know, they're, yeah, they're, you know, uh, listen, <laughs> it's hard to say though, because I know these people really good. And, I, and it's, uh, I know Jinx and, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. They used so many samples back then, and it was a different world. It wasn't. It wasn't so put together like it is now. And um, then I guess you know if, if Q pays him, then well, I know Pooh ain't gonna come out and say nothing. But with Pooh's, you know, there's a lot of. I don't know. I know. I know he. Jinx put together a lot of shit. A lot of that death certificate is all Jinx. I think. Jinx and Pooh. All those inner... Jinx created the interlude. Hmm. A lot of people don't know that. He created that interlude. Hey, hey man, what's up? It's Willis Smith, Bob, nigga. Pop, pop. All that shit. That was all created by uh, Jinx. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Jinx is Dre's cousin. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all it's all intermixed. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens, man. I, I think we'll they're going to end up squash them because you know i mean you know i don't you know jinx he's like my cousin too <laughs> there you go uh sir jinx sir jinx the fiddler <laughs> well uh we recently lost legendary comedian paul mooney 79 years old yeah were you guys close it wasn't close paul mooney was so funny um because uh Paul Mooney, would, he only fucks with you if he likes you. Like, he'll talk about you. Like, he's coming to me and saying, oh, oh, they'll, you'll always work in Hollywood because they always eat a big black nigga. They gonna always eat a big black nigga for something. They're going to leave us say, they don't run out of big black niggas. You are the big black nigga. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Him and his, his sons, um, What's interesting, people don't know, is um, I was closer to David Banks. And that's, David Banks actually wrote more for Richard than Paul did. Mm. That's where Richard loved David. I mean, he loved Paul too, but he, David Banks, where he's where he got his street shit from. David Banks was a street nigga, and Richard loved him. Game of Rolls Royce. And, they, mm. All those albums you see, David Banks produce. Rich huh. Pryor didn't even know he was gonna be recording. He was getting there, like, nigga, here, here's the money, record, let's go. He showed up to the club, they record. But David Banks, he's he's passed too. But yeah, I knew, yeah, I knew Paul. I wasn't close, but he was. Well, uh, in April of 2019, I sent an email to Paul Mooney, right, and he actually answered, you know, and asked to do an interview with him. And he actually answered back and he said, thank you, Vlad. You have a very polished and analytical talk show. This would be an honor. Let me check on it. The Lunell series are perfection. And him and Lunell were very close. See? Ultimately, that was the last I heard from him. He never, I know I responded to him right away, but he never hit me back. And ultimately he passed away some years later. And then there was the whole thing about, you know, the, you know, Richard Pryor's son, allegedly, oh, and yeah. so forth. And I think I think after that, he sort of fell back from the public eye completely. Um, and then he passed away. I mean, the fact that Paul Mooney said that I have a very polished and analytical talk show, to me, just sort of made my year that year. You know what I'm saying? I'm to have not, him say I, that to I'm me. I'm not saying, I don't want to bust your bubble, but that doesn't sound like Paul. <laughs> oh, might have been someone else? Okay, like whatever. Somebody going, I got this, Paul. Analytical. <laughs> <laughs> Your show is so <laughs> subscriptive, Richard. You like that word, Paul? I don't give a fuck what you say. Just tell the motherfucker I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I remember uh, Lunell, you know, I, I sent this to Lunell, right? And she started sending me pictures of her, her and Paul together because that was like, they were actually close. That yeah. was like her mentor, right? Yeah. And I remember he had this shirt on 
and it said, fuck this shit, you know, Nat Turner, 1837. <laughs> and I was like, that is such a Paul Mooney t-shirt right there. <laughs> he was, listen, we used to go to the OR room, the original room, around one o'clock, and he'd just be there with five people talking that shit. He would be there break, breaking it. And I don't give a damn. I, I'll tell you right now. I say, I say, nigga, makes my teeth white. <laughs> he be talk. Yeah, he was definitely uh, profound. Uh, like I say, one of the greatest. Aside by writing for Richard, just on his own. Just profound. Oh yeah, one one of the greats, and I think someone who who gave up mainstream success in order to keep it real with himself. Like he never compromised and never tried to create the type of comedy that would make everyone feel comfortable. Like he did what he did, and if it offended you, who gives a fuck? I'm gonna keep doing what I do, you know what I'm doing, and you know the, the people like the Chappelles of the world recognized that and incorporated. What, what they could with him in it, but ultimately he kept on doing his thing even after the Chappelle show. Never changed. Well, he's been doing it for years. Chappelle show was yeah. three years. Right. <laughs> like, this motherfucker has been around since the 70s. <laughs> he thought, yeah. Okay, I, uh -huh, yeah, I get it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Where's the check? <laughs> Yeah, no, I remember you made a comment also speaking of Richard Pryor. You said uh, Richard Pryor's son performed at the Super Bowl because <laughs> the weekend had the same Richard Pryor, you know, live <laughs> right. on the, the he red was dressed suit. like Richard Pryor. But he, he was, was dressed like Richard Pryor. Yeah. I was like, kind, kind, kind of was, yeah. I was like, what the was. fuck is going kind on? Of was. It's like yeah. the worst Super Bowl <laughs> ever. <laughs> like, I was like, what overall, huh? I mean, uh, performance. It was a cool performance. I liked it. I liked it. it what did cool. you like about it? I liked it. I liked that it was it was kind of unique. You know, they had all the everyone dressed like him and the mirror shit and all that. Oh, you ever heard of, you ever heard of a guy named Michael Jackson? I think so. He was did he, that uh, same type of thing years ago. <laughs> was he a dancer? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't yeah know that was a part of thing. All right. Well, but well, I mean, listen, the weekend wants to be Michael Jackson. I think I think most established R&B singers. I remember even hearing there was a there was a Michael Jackson like a special I saw and Chris Brown said, you know, I always do my best Michael Jackson impression and I hope that it, it makes him proud wherever he is and you know in the afterlife. You know what I'm saying? I think most people if you are an R&B singer you're striving to a Michael Jackson level. There's no one else to, to strive to at the very height. You know? I mean, no one could say Oh no, Michael's cool, but I'm striving to this. Nah, like I mean, you could say Marvin Gaye, maybe, but in terms of an all-around all entertainer, Michael Jackson was the greatest entertainer. You know, you know, like uh, Marvin Gaye never danced really like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He didn't. He didn't create movies and and like these spectacular, you know, visions. Like he was just an incredible singer. Yes. Uh, but Michael Jackson is is Michael Jackson. You okay, can't Michael you can't Jackson take nothing away. Is, is that's what's so beautiful about artists and the true artists. They're each individual artist. They're each, they're each goal. You can take, oh, let me, it's Rick James. Wow. There's um, Diana Ross, Smokey Robinson. Prince. Prince. <laughs> Prince. They're all, they're not like today where they're all just glumped in. With that ear, yeah. right, right there, big with the right there, big old right there, right. Right, and and back then they weren't. You didn't have to have a bunch of features on your album. You didn't have to collab, like you know what I mean. Like there's no Prince and Michael Jackson songs. There there is no <laughs> Whitney Houston and you know Marvin Gaye duets. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, well, like it's it's yeah yeah. I mean, there's Teddy people Pendergraf people and the did, double, but it was like. The sound they were looking for. It wasn't nah, like man. People people did their own projects with their own producer. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. That was it. 
We, they didn't want no one else on it. They didn't want a, a hot 16 from whatever. And I think Michael Jackson sort of lost his way later on when he started kind of incorporating more of like the rapping and stuff. That like was that, just, that was just a Michael. You need a little something. Them the people telling him he needs this. You don't need shit. He's Michael. Exactly. Exactly. Just That's what I'm saying. You don't need shit. Yeah. Like. Yeah, like I'm a huge Maroon 5 fan and yeah. I hate when they have rappers featured on their songs. Like, you know what I mean? No no disrespect to a, to a Cardi B or Megan Thee Stallion, but I don't like when they but show up But you remember the first songs. rapper that was on their song? Who? Um, Kick Bush from Chicago. Say you are, oh, you are. Oh. Um, what's my guy? What's that? Lupe. Lupe Fiasco. Okay. His was dope, yeah. though. He really started. Okay. His was dope. Lupe's was dope. I'll have to go back and listen. I'll have to go back and listen to that one. No, no. He, his, uh, was, his was dope. But, I, yeah. His was dope. Well, well, since last time we lost DMX, did you know him or run into him at all? Or? I... If I told you I was in... Um, Columbus, and I drove down to the Bad Boy concert. Mm -hmm. I'm at the Bad Boy concert. This concert is off the chain. It's literally like one of the best concerts I've ever been to in my life. I've been to Prince, um, Luther Vandross, Rakim, um, Chef and Ghostface, and this Bad Boy concert. This concert is full Wow, it's right. You can't go no higher. Puffy's in it on the song. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, right? DMX comes out. What did you get home from a nigga? It, oh! Oh! It goes pow like that. It's, it's another 35 minutes of ah, ah, right? I go backstage, tell Puff, yo, this shit was crazy. I see DMX and, um, oh, God damn it. Oh. First, I see Fendi's silly ass. <laughs> I see DMX and, um, uh, my man, what the fuck? He's one of the coldest rappers out there. They, uh, you know. God damn it. He's I in the pit. something here. Huh? I, I, need, I need some more oh, <laughs> info. Um, the locks. He wanted the original locks. Uh, Styles P. Styles. Jada Kiss. It was Styles P. Okay. Styles P. Um, it's Styles P, Jada Kiss, and what, uh, what else? Uh, and um, Chic. Yeah. So Styles P. Oh, so we get excited because, you know, it's really the first time seeing each other. We took a picture. All of us. And um, that's on my Instagram. And when he passed, I post. That's that, that's me, DMX, Styles P. Um, my homework, <laughs> Tommy Owens. <laughs> and um, that was that same concert. You see a picture of me. Um, and X, we was both so excited. You were like, yo. And Styles P, we were just, you know, it was a great, it was, it was a great time. It was a great time. Yeah, I mean, DMX was one yeah. of the greatest ever, period. No, mm -hmm. no debate. Just just a, an incredible artist. A uh, true artist. Who, I mean, a true, a true artist. A true, 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 I mean, like, true artist. Yeah. And I would always just miss him. <laughs> like, I was at Sue's rendezvous in the Bronx. Was, hey, uh, DMX just left. I was like, what? No shit. Um, this was years ago. Years ago. But that was when uh, we finally... That and uh, it's beautiful, like I said, it showed nothing but love. And I was like, uh, 
when he passed, I I went straight to that picture like, damn, I, you know, you. The same we got to call life is precious, man. It's like, the fuck? Right, because right after DMX, then we lost Black Rob, like maybe two weeks later. I was then... driving on the 101. And this song came on called Whoa. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck? Ah, I'm like, what the hell? I get off. I go straight to Big Boy Radio. That's when he was in Burbank. I'm walking in. Some people are walking out. <laughs> a group of dudes are walking out. I'm walking in. I go up. That's back then you go to the radio. I go to the radio. I'm like, yeah. What's that song you played? Oh, it's called Whoa. Black Rob, is, he just left the radio. He just left here. I'm like, what? He just left the radio. Go downstairs. I'm like, they get in their car. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yo, I need that. He's, they give me a single. A whoa. So I still have that single. Mm. Yeah. Great song. Uh, great, timeless song. And he was, and like, then, he was, I mean, he the was one, there too for the, uh, uh, oh, the, the Bad Boy uh, reunion. Yeah. That's what. Nah. I mean that I don't know why that concert just didn't go and go because that was it was phenomenal. Yep, it was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean the one that hit me the most was Shock G. Me being from the Bay Area, you know Shock G from the I, I still ain't really doing, Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shock G. I mean, you know that that just like what the fuck. Listen, man, we're getting older. We're, I mean, I'm in my late 40s. I'm turning 48 next month. You're in your, you know, early 50s. I'm 53. Uh, 53. A lot of these guys, man, these guys that I just mentioned, all three of them are in their 50s. Uh, you know, we have to be careful because, you know, just the other day, Young Noble from the Outlaws had a heart attack. And he's only 43. No shit, the original he's a, Outlaws? He's, yeah. The original Outlaws. Yeah, Young Noble. You know, the last outlaw member uh, yeah, just heart. had a heart attack. Yeah. See, that's yeah. what he I killed just, me. Just, These kids be skinny and... I, well, I mean, Noble's not exactly skinny. He's not overweight, but he's not, like, skinny, skinny. I mean, you know, he's a little stocky. But, you know, I checked up on him. He hit me right back. He said, uh, I mean, essentially what I what I heard was that he had clogged arteries. You know, he, he smoked cigarettes, um, you know, and he had clogged arteries and... They ended up, I think that he had to do like two procedures, one procedure to clog the first, you know, to unclog the first one and then another one for the second. From what I hear, he's doing better. He just texted me as we were doing this uh, interview. He's got something that he wants to put out. Uh, but I'm just saying, we're get, you know, you get into your 40s, 50s, 60s, you start losing people that you know and you love and you look up to and you appreciate and yeah. everything else like that, man. We got to get, you know, I lost 20 pounds during the pandemic. I'm actually uh, going to... Um... That's my thing now, if you can tell. I'm uh I'm I am trying to lose some weight because this hang with my daughter when I finally get to see her after after the wombat loses her talons on her. <laughs> I'll be I'll be able to, you know, take her to the park. There's a lot of stuff. Like um yeah, yeah, man, you want to be healthy enough to keep up with your kids, especially if you have young kids. I would say you want to be, big you be healthy enough so you can be sued or put in jail. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way around it. Like, uh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Final question before I let you go, and I'm going to go left field with this one. Final question. There's been a lot of UFO sightings recently. Oh, please. And even Obama, Obama did an interview on a talk show, and he said, well, you know, when he became president, he asked if there was, like, some lab somewhere where they keep, like, the, the alien corpses, you know, like an Independence Day or something like that. And they said, no, there wasn't. But he did say that these videos that have been circulating are real videos, and we should be concerned because there's no explanation for what these things are. You know, like, the way these things move on video is not like anything that moves from Earth, from any country, you know, in terms of, you know, scientific technology. So what's your take on the whole alien thing? Listen, 
There's a slave song that turned into a gospel song. You've heard it many times before, but you know what they're talking about. But the slave song is about a slave in a field looking at what you call a UFO. But they were called chariots. That's what they Looking at this UFO and saying, I don't know what you are, but come down and take me. Get me the fuck out of here. Any place is better but here. And that song is called Swing Down, Sweet Chariot Stop, and Let Me Ride. Right. Well, you're talking about the Parliament Funkadelic version. No, no, no. That's a gospel song. Well, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot is a gospel song. Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Read it. Listen to it. No, no, I got it. But what you just saying was the George Clinton version of that song. It's the same version, but you just sort, sort of interpreted it. Right, exactly. Stop and let me ride. Mm-hmm. So you say they've been talking about aliens this whole time anyway. Ain't no aliens. We the aliens. <laughs> we. <laughs> what do you mean aliens? Ain't no, yeah, they, you think this big ass universe just for these 3,500 people on Earth? It's stupid. There's, there's, there's Earths on Earths on Earth. They don't understand what the ocean is. We haven't been down to the bottom of no oceans. We've been in layers. You can't crack a mountain. If you if you if you went right now and grabbed a handful of dirt, excuse me, that's a world in there. There's all kind of okay. living things you can't see. Same thing we're here. We're just a layer. And whenever you see one of those chariots, they're just tubbing out, they're just grabbing a full of dirt, going, look at these motherfuckers. They got masks on. <laughs> COVID. He actually took the vaccination. <laughs> of course. There you have it. There you have it. That's your take on aliens then. There's no eight. Listen. <laughs> That's a lot of wasted space. You think? I told you my theory on God, right? I'm not sure. I my theory is that God is water and nothing else. Okay. Huh. All right. Nothing else. Just water. It's water. So you could drink God. Well, God's in you. You already have it mm-hmm. in you. You need it to survive. Okay. You need okay. that's why we created soda, so we would have to drink water. But soda has water in it. Exactly. Everything has water in it. Pretty much, yeah. No, no. You're three fourths of of water. Yeah. So is what? The earth. The earth, right. When you were born, you had to come through what? Water. You live six months, you live nine months in what? Water. The earth gets its energy from what? The sun. The sun is made of what? Gas. Hydrogen. Okay, which is a gas. Which is water. Well, it's part of water. H2O. Two two hydrogens, one oxygen. So what is H2O? Water. (laughs) Why are you fighting me on this, man? I'm not fighting you. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm picking your brain. It's water. I'm picking your brain. It's H2O, but fuck, it's water. It's water. Okay. Right. And, you know, a lot of people, I remember when Lil Nas X did the whole Satan video, like, I did a few interviews where I said Satan isn't real, and everyone got on me like, ah. Yeah. yeah. Satan's so what's your take real. on Satan? Satan's, Satan's not, real. not real. Okay. Satan's in your mind. You make Satan. Right. You 
screen safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything bad that happened to a human came from a human. But the reason we created Satan is the same reason we created God. So we can have somebody to blame and somebody to... He did it. Satan did it. He right. made me do it. No, motherfucker, you the one with the gun. You did it. Right. You did it. So I asked people, I said, so you have to have somebody with the... God said, I'm going to step out. You need a God to do right as a middle person. Then who's the Satan? Then you. If you need God to do the right thing, why don't you just do the fucking right thing? Yeah. Yeah. Ice I mean, Cube, listen, I'm Sim, Jinx, the money. <laughs> Yeah, no, listen, I, I'm not religious, man. Uh, you know, I'm an atheist. I, I've been saying that for years. And, uh, you know, do I think that religion is a good or bad thing? Ultimately, I think it's overall a good thing because I think it, it creates certain concepts of how we should live with each other and how we should act towards each other, that if you follow them, you will overall have a better society. But just like anything else, there's going to be a certain number of people that are going to use things for their own self-interest. They're going to twist shit up and, and reinterpret things so they can make money or they could have women or whatever else for themselves. Just like everything else, whatever system you, you do, someone's going to try to break that system to try to cheat. And I look at religion the same, the same way. And if religion works for you and it helps to, for you to live a better life and be a better person, I am all for it. Be as religious as you want. But in the, same, in the same token, if someone chooses not to believe in God, you have to respect their point of view as well and not say that they're going to hell or they're like, they got it wrong and you're the only one with the right answer. And I've always said this. Now, for everyone who believes in Jesus Christ or Allah or Buddha, if you go back a couple thousand years, there's going to be a, a huge number of people that worshipped Thor, the god of thunder, with the same level of, you know, a fervor. You know, now everyone looks at Thor as a Marvel character, but he was an actual god that people worshipped and built statues over and devoted their lives to. So what, the people that, that worship Thor are all idiots, you know, because he's a Marvel you know, comic book right now? No, you know. People have their own things that they want to look up to and how, how they get, you know, through their lives the best. And you have to respect everyone's idea in the same fashion if you want people to respect your ideas. That's how I'm going to end it. Yeah. If, yeah. If, yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's why I don't, you know, I've, I've been, you know, I've been, listen, <laughs> my mother used to make me go to, Sunday school, and they used to kick me out. They used to call her because I would ask too many questions. Miss mm. uh, Hubbard, <laughs> I remember one time uh, they were talking about the wedding, and um, Jesus performed this miracle. He took the water, turned it to wine. I was like, why didn't they just drink the water? Water in those days, running water was a miracle back then. Could you just right. drink that cold water? You yeah, had to yeah. have wine. Why not just drink the cold, clean water? Yeah. Adam and Eve. To say that God created Adam, put him here. with the other animals who had male and female, you go, oops, I forgot to make you a female. <laughs> it's ridiculous because everything comes from the woman. Mm -hmm. She has the eggs, the milk. She's the whole grocery store. Right. So to have her as a second thought, like, you know what? Instead of making another human with nuts, let's stop this whole nut thing. 
She had to come first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's also the whole Virgin Mary thing. Let's not forget that whole. Imagine you being Peter. Hey, I just was working. You what? <laughs> <laughs> you come home and your wife tells you she's pregnant from the light. You did what? I'm telling you, I'm sitting here. I was sitting here watching. Um, Atlanta Housewives and the light came. Yep. Yep. Hey, man, listen, whatever gets you through the day, whatever gets you through this life, you know, life is hard. You're guaranteed to have struggle, strife, you're going sadness, to have, you're defeat. Going to you're going you're gonna to have it. You're going to have loss. We're not here forever. You're going to lose people that are close to you. You know, people are going to betray you. People will stab you in the back. Uh, you know, you're going to have health problems at some point. You know, whatever else to get you through those hard times if religion is that, I am 100% for it. To all my Christian brothers, my Muslim brothers, my Jewish brothers, you know, my Hindu brothers, my, my Buddhist brothers, however, or whatever, whatever religion that you have, you know, my Mormon brothers, whoever, whatever you choose to follow that helps you get through this time, I am 100% for it. But my whole thing is you got to respect whatever someone else chooses to follow as well. That's my thing. That sounds like the Faze end of Soul love, Train. Man. But, wait, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, start over? I said, that sounds like the end of Soul Train. I, I fucked up the ending. Right? And that's peace and soul. <laughs> sounds like, get you through the day, you know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. My Soul Train, my Soul Train closing. I'll take that. I'll take that. Hey, man, Soul Train is a classic show. Of course. I don't mind copying that. <laughs> Phase on love, man. Six months later. Thank you so much for coming through. It's always classic whenever we do our thing, man. Always. Definitely appreciate it. Congrats, you know, and then you got a new TV show that's coming out as well, right? Um, Step Up High Water. It's on, re airing on Stars. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I, I might be in it. Allegedly, there's a DJ Vlad character. I. Man may or may not be floating around in the script. If it is, cool. If not, that's cool too. I'm not tripping. I'm not a- I can make I'm all that happen. That's, <laughs> that's right. I'm not someone that 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 is striving for, for Hollywood roles, but hey. Well, comes, actually, I'm, I'm it makes sense in this, how they have you in it. That's why I was like, oh, this yeah. is dope. But I thought they knew, I thought you knew about it. Nah, nah, but, but they actually reached out. You know, I may or may not be in it, who knows? Uh, you know, I'm definitely happy I was in the boondocks. That to me was one of my great accomplishments being a character in the boondocks. Uh, you know, so yeah, some other shit, shit happens cool. If not, Vlad TV is doing just fine. Uh, Faison, man, thank you so much for coming through. Until next time. Peace. <laughs> and so... <laughs>